Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's Lightning Takes. And let's get right to the news. Okay, we've got some more tidbitty quote things coming from the Empire article that's coming out tomorrow, Thursday. By the time it comes out, we'll have already covered it all. Doubtful. But then again, depending on how many big pictures they put in there, you don't know how much space we're going to get. It's going to be a lot of big pictures. Big pictures. Sorry. I don't know why I hot pocketed that. <laughs> I was just going to say, was that hot pockets? Yeah. Okay, but yes, let's start with Kathleen Kennedy's quotes in the Empire Magazine Summer Slam. Summer Slam? We're doing WWE first, coverage now. First, this is what she had to say on the Ray movie. The First Order has fallen. The Jedi are in chaos. There's even a question of how many exist anymore. And Ray's building what? a new order based on the text that she was given and that Luke imparted on her. How is there a question when you just had a movie called The Last Jedi? Well, she's saying Force users. No, she said Jedi. Whatever. Maybe she counts Finn. But he's not a Jedi. Right, but there's not anything saying... Maybe there's Ahsoka. Is I around am no Jedi Ezra. either. She is too. She's back. She yeah, even, even said in the trailer, trailer yeah. Jedi. I really do think she kind of retook that title when Yoda kind of gave her the little... Yeah. The little wink and be like, you're good. In Rebels, yeah. We're cool. I think that's when she really took her mantle back. Movie of Ahsoka getting her mojo back. <laughs> How Ahsoka got her groove back. Yes, that's the next movie we're going to watch. Nice. That's what Dave Filoni would call a movie too, isn't it? Sure. All right, let's move on then to Ryan Johnson. This is what she said about him. <laughs> Ryan and I talk all the time. He just keeps getting more and more successful, and it keeps moving things back further and further. Aww. One day we'll figure this out. Aww. One day. She's saying it's still happening. <laughs> Just give it up. Give it up. He's been so successful that he just doesn't have time, time for Star for Wars. Star Wars. Don't you love that? Like, if I'm Kathleen Kennedy and I want to get Star Wars movies made and everybody I keep hiring tells me, yeah, I'll get around to it eventually, I fire you immediately. I do. <laughs> like, um, I'm Star Wars. I'm Disney. I'm the big league. You didn't need you to go, go Valley You want to go pitch in the minors that, for a while? But, yeah. Go for it. But, I mean, Have it fun. is. You're not wrong. I don't know that I, again, like the Valley Girl kind of thing. It really didn't there. go full Valley Girl. You oh, you... No, no, I could have gone full. And I, I believe it, yes. But, no, I, I'm saying, look, if Star Wars is, it is the major leagues, right? It's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Like, that should be... I'm not saying everybody has to try to do a Star Wars movie. That shouldn't... That's not going to be everybody's goal, obviously. No, there's but different if, major leagues for different people. Exactly. But it is the major leagues of, you know whatever you want to call Star Wars, the, the, this kind of fandom, right? Mm. And so if you're like a Ryan Johnson and you keep like, yeah, I'll, I'll get your movie eventually. Nick, no, this is it. This is your, you've been called up to the big leagues. You're either going to do the movie or you're not. Mm -hmm. Period. Or we'll find someone else. Bingo. And, and I know he's done one before. I get it. But, you know, th that's that's what it is. This is this is it. This is your shot. We're not going to, we're not going to bend to your rules or your time schedule. You, you come do the Star Wars movie now or forget it. Get out of here. I like the way you said that. All right, next on Taika Watiti. Taika is working away. He's just, and he won't get mad at me for saying this, slow. We've got a couple of acts. We need a third. <laughs> so, he, so he's written two-thirds of a movie, it sounds like. Well, now he's taking a break to go work on a different movie. So as she said, he is just Again, slow. you're fired. Get him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> How do you, I mean, that, I that's like, like, has anybody ever, I mean, okay. Are people more afraid of Star Wars though now because of how the sequel trilogy was received? Sure, but you should be. Like, you should understand, like, if you're going to, if you're going to dive in the deep end, if you're going to swim with the sharks, like, you know, you want to be the big time. I feel like they should look at this as a challenge. I can be the one who brings Star Wars back. You would think so. But I'm saying, <laughs> but like, too busy you, being afraid. you know, it, it's, it's the risk. It's the gamble. Of course it, the, of course it should be scary. You shouldn't go into it like, oh, yeah, I got this covered. I can do this. This is just Star Wars. <laughs> Next on Lando and Rogue Squadron. Jeez, oh, this is like the island of misfit movies that never get made. Lando is still on the books, and Rogue Squadron is still on the books. We just want them to be great. They can only I... be great if they happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, like I was about to say before, it's like going for a job interview. And, you know, it's, it's not an easy job to get. It's the, the upper echelon, the upper crust. And, and they're like, okay, so when can you start? Ah, I don't know. I'll get back to you. Well, and our Lando actor is, you know, Donald Glover. Donald Glover, he's, yeah. He's busy. So he can't be in Star Wars right now. He's too busy. Sure. Vogue Squadron, they just 
Wogue? <laughs> Wogue, Rogue Squadron. Squadron. They just don't know what to do with. Maybe they're waiting for Tony Gilroy to be done so they can use him. Hey. Like, hey, it says Rogue in the title. You want this? There you go. It's <laughs> it's his sequel to Andor, <laughs> and Rogue One. Even yes. though he didn't really like sequel way out in the future. He only fixed Rogue One. He didn't really write Rogue One per se. I think he fixed it to the way that it was the only way it could be. Apparently, whatever he did, it worked. And then about eventizing Star Wars. It's much better to tell the truth that we're going to make these movies when they're ready to be made and release them when they're ready to be released. Well said. Well said, meaning never. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I'm exhausted. I'm... It's okay. It's okay, he says. But again, okay, so we can go to the job analogy. Okay, Kathleen Kennedy, president of Lucasfilm, certainly. But she does have uh, people above her. What? So. If you're at your job, you're head of a department, and your boss comes to you and says, um, when is this order going to go out? And you're like, <laughs> when it's <laughs> ready. When it's ready. Like, what kind of stupid question is that? Hey, hey, it's going to be ready when it's ready. Yeah, it's, it's it'll be ready. ready when it's ready. Like, I think you get fired or reprimanded to some extent, mm. right? I just, I don't understand. I don't understand how any of this works because it, it doesn't seem to work. Well, then they moved on to talking to Dave Filoni. <laughs> and um, he says... A little bit about Thrawn. He goes, there are a lot of factors, especially in playing with a character like novelist Timothy Zahn's Thrawn. I want to make sure that I'm honoring ideas that Tim had, so I want to see what's in his books for the story. In The Bad Batch, there's actually some crossover with the book Heir to the Empire in the military base of Tantus, so there are little things along the way that I've built across different mediums, all in preparation for things that come later. Doesn't mean he hasn't read Timothy Son's book? <laughs> he almost made it sound like he he's had. like, I want to see what's in them books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Help just us. buy some, Filoni. Just buy uh, them. You, you... <laughs> just read them. Please, Dave. What's, what's in these books? Uh, and is yeah. it something that I will just change because I like my idea better? As soon as you Boom. said it, I was wondering if you were thinking the same thing I was. Like, he didn't say he'd read them. He's like, I want to see what's in these things. Like, I heard people talk about them like they're decent or pretty good. Yeah, maybe I should give them a... Give a once over. Perusing. Yeah. <laughs> Take some ideas out of him. Then they asked him if he saw Thrawn as the big bad of this New Republic era, and if that's kind of how he is positioning him. He says, Definitely. In my eyes, when Timothy Zahn wrote Heir to the Empire, Thrawn became this very iconic villain because he was different than anything we'd seen before. He wasn't another helmet-wearing, lightsaber-wielding bad guy, you know? <coughs> Gideon. There's a lot of pull to make characters that are like Vader. <coughs> Get him. Because wow. it's so iconic. But the boldness that Tim had was to make somebody that wasn't like that. That didn't have those abilities. But could fight in a different way. In the words Star Wars, the war part of it. Him being a Grand Admiral, a leader, a military strategist, a Moriarty archetype. Someone that will outthink you, outstrategize you. That really resonated. He's a critical player in this time period. We're fortunate to have that character and fortunate to have Lars Mikkelsen playing him. I think you just uh, showed me why I was so disappointed in Gideon Season 3. He just became cliche Star Wars villain, didn't he? He did. He wanted to be Vader so bad he tried to clone himself into him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I need a dark saber. Um, I need a dark I need a cape. and a saber. Um, I need a metal oh, suit God. made of Beskar because Beskar is cool. Yeah. And then I need force powers because... I need to clone me some force powers. I want to be Darth Vader. I want so bad He's to be Darth, Darth Vader. He's just a Darth Vader wannabe, like, li <laughs> in story. Club. Yeah. <laughs> there's a... He's like, oh, Darth Vader was destroyed, so there's a vacancy, I see. <laughs> I will be called Darth Gideon. Uh, Darth Bitchin, perhaps? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> That's from later. I don't even know if that video is out yet. That's the future. That is the future. See? That all You're comes together. You're making a joke from the future. Yes. Because of a video we recorded already. Yes. It's going to make oh, sense. Yeah. Don't worry. It's all connected. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Yeah. Yeah, sure. They asked him what it was like when Kathleen Kennedy asked him to make a Star Wars film. And he says, I don't assume anything. I don't think that I deserve anything. Kathy, upon seeing my work in live action realm, was like, Dave, we have to have you do a movie. That's a good Kennedy voice. <laughs> my goodness. A person like that telling you that is an amazing thing. But I always look at myself and say... Well, am I ready to do that? I appreciate that, and I, I think she would know, but it's got to be the right story, and it's got to be the right group of people backing you. 
a big reason why I felt confident going into live action was all because Kathy was there. She's been a very big supporter of me all along the way, so it's a great moment. I immediately think of the responsibility. I immediately think of the job that's going to entail, and I want to make sure I can do a good job. Hmm. We hope you can. Well. I have faith in you, Dave. Don't, don't mess it up. At least you got Ahsoka is like his big proving ground going into a movie. It is. This is this. This means a lot. It's gonna say a lot about what we should expect out of this movie. I think. I mean, I've heard people talk about it. The people who get early views of stuff and we're like, "Oh wow, it's like samurai and artful, amazing combats." And apparently, somebody cried and said it was a religious experience. I think that was Dave himself. <laughs> Dave, stop saying things like that. <laughs> He's like, guys, this movie is just so amazing. Like, didn't you write this? Well, yeah, yeah. but. I wrote it and directed it, and I cried. And I cried. Well, he makes himself cry. That's something. I don't know uh, if that's good or bad yet. I think George made himself cry. If you ever seen the when he watched the first Phantom Menace cut, he's like, I, I may have gone too far in a few places. I think he wanted to shed a couple <laughs> tears, too, at that point. And then the rest of the Ahsoka cast was present, and they said there's a lot of interesting things because the ghost is a family. The actress who's playing Harris says, you know, it's the, the strength that they need to get through what they're facing requires them to come back together and redefine that family. I'm like, interesting. Totally a rebel does sequel. That mean, does that mean Zeb will be in there too? Zeb. Of course Zeb's going to be there. Zeb Aurelius. Like Zeb's like the coolest thing they did in live action so far because he but looks so dang good. But you can't have Zeb without Callus. They're buddies. Maybe Callus will be in there. Mutton Yay. chops and all. Mutton chop. Or sexy Callus. What did we call him? Hot Callus, right? Hot Callus. Yeah, he got a nickname after he took the helmet off and cut his hair or something. Yeah, he... Or grew it out. He was a fulcrum agent. He was, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He became one. And then, as a treat for Rebels fans, you'll get to see, if they say, an immediate connection between them with strength. And you trust that there's a history there. You're going to feel there's a history there, hopefully. You could watch a history there. You could watch it, but if you don't... You'll supposedly be able to feel it. <laughs> and for the ones that have been anticipating this story for a long time, they're going to be really happy. And then they had to talk about the Loth Cat. Oh? Yes. You've seen it in the trailer. Sure. I've yes. seen a lot of Loth The Loth cats. Cat. Bordizo, who's playing Sabine, says, That was my little buddy. The cat, the complexity of design, I mean, it has a real skeleton under there. Because that's how they control such intense facial expressions and everything. Did it would, they genetically modify a cat into a loth cat? It would snarl and look cute. Really, the detail was next level. Move over, Grogu. Wow. Yeah, they're saying that this animatronic loth cat is, like, top tier. Um, I'd be impressed if it uh, trumps Grogu. <laughs> it might trump Grogu, though, because it's never going to be meant to talk. <laughs> we aren't going to believe it's 50 years old <laughs> and still a baby. Uh, it's already got some it's advantages, It's just a doesn't cat. It? It's just a cat. It's got it's advantages. It's just a cat. Nobody... And that's all we can expect is a cute loth cat that's animatronic, which well, means that someday Disney will sell it. We can all have an animatronic You know it's cat. already being built right now. I wonder how my creator. cats would react to an They're animatronic being... cat living As we speak, there's a shipping container coming from China full of them. <laughs> Multiple shipping containers. They'll be ready for <laughs> August. Adopt gonna, a loth cat? They're not going to mess this up like they did with the Grogu thing. Well, where they'll they have them out in Chris- by Christmas. Yeah, exactly. Even if they're like, we aren't really going to talk about it. By the time Christmas comes, it'll be like, boom, now you too can own your own loth cat. <laughs> and Luke won't ever come and take him away and give him a choice? <laughs> because Luke doesn't care what choices your loth cat has. Do you want some kibble or do you want some fish? <laughs> loth cat's like, both. See, it does talk. <laughs> I said like. It won't say it. Oh. It'll just give you the expression. And it'll snarl at unwanted visitors. Mm. That's all I want. Won't give me an animatronic loth cat. That cat will sit with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you two out. You just called out the two cats, yeah. Neither one. One of them comes over like, what? Yeah, and now well, he's going to go sit with you while you're recording. Yeah. Whatever, we're done here. We are done here. That's going to be all we got for you this time. So now it's your turn to take to the comments below. And there it is. There's a cat coming to my lap. Mm. <laughs> and tell us what you think of any and the all traitor. of today's news. And let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>